Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the, this is, we're going to call this, we're going to call this the test episode of the Freedom of Show, though we will make it publicly available for reasons. Now, eventually, when we do this, this is actually going to be for our, our paid members only, that they'll see the full show, and then you'll see the clips. Is that how we're going to do this? Is that, is that what we're working on, Mr. Uh, Mr. Bill? I haven't even introduced us yet, uh, so... Just introducing the concept of the Freedomist, which is the show. That's the name of the show. It's just called the Freedomist. It's not the Freedomist show. It's the Freedomist. You know what I'm saying? It's literally just the Freedomist because we are the. Freedom. We are. We we right. personify right. Freedomist from from our head to our toes. So my name is Paul Gordon Collier, and Please I leave am... your toes out of this. Okay. I am the uh, former, I, I guess I'll say, the f I was the former editor of the Tioga Freedomist, which was a newspaper that was run in Tioga County, PA. And I believe you also, Mrs. William, B what are we going by, Bill Collier? Is that what we're calling, Bill Collier? Are you Bill? That's fine. Just Bill? Yeah, you, you're also the former editor of the Tioga Freedomist, are you not? Exactly. You, you took the first half and I took the second half. And uh, you have some other credentials. You want to tell some people a little bit about some of your uh, credentials there that why people should take us seriously as human beings? Or should we just assume that our look? I really can't think today? of specific credentials. I mean, former, uh, uh, well, 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 in the Navy, you, you did intelligence work, intelligence analysis work. Yes, you and know. I know that's an oxymoron, but yes, so it was naval <laughs> Uh, I thought you loved the Navy. Okay, I your do. Navy friends are not going to like this. They're not going to like they this. They will understand. Will they understand? So what we're going to do on this show is... And, oh, I don't know. The credentials. I'm liking this. What other credentials? What other... Oh, yo, you want me to feed, uh, feed the machine? Yeah, feed it. You, feed it feed you have feed planted it. churches, right? You have planted numerous yep. churches in the mm -hmm. past, so we got that, that Christian background. Well, not there. numerous. Only one. I've assisted only a lot one. of other things, but... Only one. Okay. Oh, only one. We have run, by the way, both of us to death together, and you by yourself. But uh, some combination thereof. We've run numerous uh, little local. I guess you call them like micro newspapers, little like neighborhood newspapers. So we've been experimenting with this whole freedomist type news model for a while, and this is the latest iteration. This is our and national. I, and I also co-authored co the book. Oh, right. On the Capitalist Manifesto. So on, on the Capitalist go to Manifesto. Amazon, look up what they'll call your Capitalist Manifesto uh, right there. You can buy a copy of the book um, and, and Banco, learn about Ralph Benko is the co-author there. Ralph, Ralph Benko, Benko he, former, yeah. we want to say what he was. Former, he's definitely a, a Reagan White House alumni. Former White House uh, uh, economics advisor person. I don't know what right. his official title was, but under Reagan. So we've got all kinds of credentials here, folks, for you to take us seriously, because that's what it's all about, oh, yeah. right? It's all about oh, yeah. credentials. No, no. I mean, no, I think yeah. that my, my looks uh, are enough to convince you that you should listen. You know, I, I, I run um, uh, Regal Blue Media, which is a, you know, it's a million-dollar company that does a lot of, uh, uh, I'd say, persuasion work um, in, the, in the political space, in the advocacy space. So I'm generally uh, my my finger on the pulse of he what's has going on. finger on the pulse. Okay, this is a finger on oh, the yeah. pulse. Yeah, that pulse finger, is like boom, boom, boom. I'm on it. on the pulse, right there. pulse, pulse type show. So there you go, folks. That that's hello and welcome to the Freedomist. We're awesome and important people, and of course, you guys all agree. And that. And then, now my that. brother's uh, he's a he's a poet who's been. Say, say the place you were published is really big, which is pretty impressive. I guess the biggest is, <laughs> I don't know, it's kind of an embarrassment in a way. I've been published in the Columbia Poetry Review. That was back in the late 90s. That's, that's yeah, yeah, published. but like seven pages. Right, seven pages. Uh, oh, six, uh, no, I don't think it was seven. It was six, six or seven. Six, it, was, six. it was a lot of pages. It was, it was uh, you know, for, and, for, for then a young poet, that was pretty impressive. Now, Columbia, by the way, uh, that's a Columbia University, which is the the university, the prevailing university for journalism. So, <laughs> you know, uh, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that at this point. It used they to be really like you. They really like you. Guilt by association, if we're, if that's a thing. Uh, that's that's a thing. Yeah, that's that's it. That is a thing. thing. I, don't, I don't know if. Uh, well, you know, you got your, your fake news mantle, you know, uh, uh, what is. Uh, I got my fake news credentials, so, you know. Yeah, so you, yeah, you got that going for you. Fake news, MSM. So love, love what we're doing because you know I'm, I'm one of you in a sense because you know I, I got poetry published by your, your, your 
Poetry Journal. So that's that's all it takes, I hope. And uh, with that in mind, are you ready to talk about the first story that we're going to talk about? I'm 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 anxious to what, see what, what you have come up with. Well, well, uh, some of the things you wrote, so you know, and some of the things that I wrote. <laughs> Oh, I think I might be familiar with them. Yeah, you might be familiar with the things that you wrote, but we're going to actually start sleep writing again. We're probably going to start with something I had never like ever heard of. But go ahead. Yeah, well, I don't know. I think you have heard of this. So our first story that we're going to do here is this is the Loudon School Board versus the people over CRT in schools. Now, we are. This is a test show, so I haven't figured everything out yet. One of the things that I haven't figured out is is how to get you to hear the video clip that we're going to hear. And this is essentially right. So, so, so the audience will hear it, but you will not. So you're going to have to. So just, I'm flying blind here. I'm I'm literally flying blind here. <laughs> literally, that's what I've done here on the first uh the first uh, well the, this is please, the first uh, show. Please, please press F in the comment section for right. me. Thank you. I'm, I'm not competitive with my brother and all. I'm not, not trying to make him look bad. You guys know that. So I'm going to play just the first start of this uh, first video just to give you a little bit of a backdrop here of what we're talking about here. And this is from PragerU. This is YouTube, uh, their YouTube channel. And I'm going to play this clip. And uh, my brother, my, my, my brother is not going to hear it, but you, the studio audience, will. So I'm not going to play a long part. Just a it's a poison. Let's get along. You. It denies the out. individual the content of their character and the merit of their work. How concerned should parents be about woke indoctrination and critical race theory in How schools? And what can they do to fight against it? How concerned they should be is extremely. Uh, like on a scale of 1 to 10, 12. I say that with no reservation. It's a nightmare. We are the freest country in the world. Everyone, blacks, Latinos, women, LGBTQ, all minorities have equal opportunity under the law. All minorities have equal opportunity under the law. So the woman, so it shows in the beginning the first, uh, the woman that's uh, at this meeting that's uh, talking to the school board. And uh, it's Loudoun, Virginia School Board, which is enacting all of these so-called woke uh, policies, woke if you will, policies. And uh, the... The upshot of it is that we've also have an arrest that uh, took place where one of the teachers was arrested and shuffled away because of reasons. I don't know whether the reasons are justified or not, but it doesn't appear to be uh, very well. The uh, sensible reason is because the school board just decided that's it, the meeting is over, and the parents were like, no, no, this meeting ain't over. I mean, this is not a school board that is fundamentally acting like they're an elected board. They're acting like they're an appointed board uh taking care of uh, small children uh, more than uh, a board that is uh, within the framework of a Republican type of governance system. So uh, before I, uh, I go further, I'll give you an opportunity to add some, some thoughts about uh, just in general the overall what's going on with this so-called critical race theory type stuff being uh, injected into our public schools. You got some thoughts here as we go forward here, sir? So we actually had a, um, an article really that gets into the depths of critical theory itself, which critical the race theory is based on. And it is extremely divisive, very non-redemptive. It uh, racializes, as far as critical race theory goes, it racializes everything. And it does it through these really indirect loops. You know, as an example, and this is not out of the realm of theoretical possibilities with these folks. Um, if my last name is Collier and some guy named Collier a couple, you know, a hundred years ago is something awful. And despite the fact that my last name Collier is an adopted name from that my, my father adopted into the family. And then I became a Collier and so did you, Paul. Well, we are now collectively we bear the collective guilt of that person because as colliers we are all guilty look you cannot run a society when you can be found uh to be shamed to feel guilty for things that you have no absolute no participation in no knowledge of or that didn't happen when you were alive or things that are happening now that um as soon as you start to make indirect cause a reason to punish everybody, you get into chaos and or some sort of authoritarian system. Because the only way you can enforce it is through an authoritarian system. So 
this idea that well, white people are privileged. I mean, objectively speaking, um, uh, a black person growing up in the inner city has definite disadvantages, and that's a fact. Uh, we talk about that in the article that we did about you know simply saying pull yourself up by your bootstraps is a really ignorant thing to say to folks that are in that situation. But this does not mean that Bill Collier or the white guy has to somehow feel guilty or shame because of that. I want them all to have the same privilege and respect that I do. So the, the solution is that we elevate everybody. We don't tear anybody down. And we daggone sure don't want kids to be told, as they say, you have sin skin. Uh, yes, oh my goodness! Well, your what skin I is white. That's my phrase. The sin yeah, that's that's the your thing. Paul. Ideology. Where it's a thin skin ideology, and it's and it's just awful. Parents are starting to realize what it is, and not surprisingly, a lot of so-called minority parents are like, "No, I do not want my kid going to school and being told essentially that he has no freaking hope because he's black." Well, there's nothing he can do about it. Well, I've theorized a while ago that this whole ideology uh is essentially i mean it's a lot of things so i can't say it's one thing but but one of of what emerges from this is kind of a dialectical white supremacism and i believe mm -hmm. that black families are starting to recognize that part of it the 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 assumption is that white people are superior now this is like as I and I've said this to you before, this is like the in uh, somewhere around the the, the 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 turn of the first millennium. You know, when we moved from B.C. to A.D., somewhere around that period of time, there was a one of these uh, so-called mystery religions uh, emerging in Egypt was called uh, Abraxan. They worship uh, a god called Abraxas who uh, encompassed both good and evil. And I think that's kind of what CRT creates here. It's, it's this, this white Abraxan God that is on one hand is the devil that literally invented evil. And on the other hand is the savior that will protect everybody else from the evil that the white devil <laughs> invented. And I think some black families just start, wait a second. You're telling my kids that white people are all powerful. Wow. Well, I mean, I, I, the people that are promoting um, this theory uh, definitely don't have our best interest or anybody's best interest at no. heart. No. But the reason why it can exist at all and isn't like just rejected in part is because there really are injustices yeah, that are perpetuated the against, the against minority groups. Yeah, this is And Isaiah our country 32. has, uh, I was going to say, our country has far to go toward its ideals, which its ideals are great, and we should uphold those ideals, and they're awesome. And the fact that we even have those ideals is, to me, what our greatness really is, our goodness. Our goodness, but, right. And you've written an article about this, which you've Right, America's goodness. So America is. is good, but not for the reasons you think. It, it's not good because we've obtained even 70% of what we could obtain. It's good because we want to, we are striving toward that goal, the arc of history of American history is moving in that direction, but now it's it's threat it's being threatened to be derailed because now we're it's one thing if you want to get up and say America's ideal of unity and diversity is not being respected because of X Y Z. It's another thing to say unity and diversity is just a racist ideal. That's <laughs> stupid. Right. But so so they're attacking the very foundation. And then when the house comes crumbling down, well, they'll be there. They'll be there to pick up the pieces uh, with a jackboot on your neck. So, so there's that's that. what CRT is all about. It's about power. Yeah, and I and I also, if you read the article that 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 we're basing this on, I I I go into a little bit of detail about where CRT emerges and you know it's 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 uh it's it's complex it's always far more complex and more nuanced than the world will have you believe and there are various versions of CRT which are less mm -hmm. immersive in nature than others but the version of CRT that will hit the streets amongst the the masses will be extremely authoritarian and uh, and it's it's based upon an assumption fundamentally that human beings are formed by the society and therefore, we can make human beings reflect whatever we assume is the good human. This is worshiping the created rather than creator. So we are basically trying to make uh, make humans in in our 
image, and in this case, humans in the image of, of an elite powerful few that are using a weapon of war like CRT as a means of controlling the masses so they don't have to compete against them. That's at the heart of it. Now, I'm going to, before we end this story, I'm going to play a brief clip here from, well, uh, uh, just a little bit, because, uh, of course, uh, I don't know if you guys follow me, Memeology 101, but Memeology 101 has a little bit of a, well, I'm just going to play it. And, 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 and again, Bill cannot hear this, so he doesn't know what we're playing. So, Bill, you're going to just have to be quiet until I'm done, starting now. Parents at Aladdin County School were protesting the school's inclusion of CRT in its syllabus. The school board didn't like the parents' outburst, so they called the police. They called the police. And now they're showing a clip of their parents in the U.S. National Anthem in response to CRT as police arrived. I'm not going to play all of it, even though it's only two and a half minutes long. I'm sure many of you probably watching the show probably already seen that clip. Uh, but, yeah, they, they called in the police to shut down the set. I don't know what's going to happen in this school district. I don't, you know, we have, unfortunately, we have Republican and Democrat. And the way that I see the Republicans and Democrats, basically, they both seem to have elements of pro-Bill of Rights uh, elements to them. And neither one has all of the pro-Bill of Rights elements in all of them, which is convenient. So you have, it's hard for you to align against one party in favor of another party because you always have to, to choose a little bit of poison. So I'm not sure that the community as a whole, I don't know how much these parents represent the, the, the will of the people in that, in that area, but we, I mean, hopefully we'll see people emerge that, re, that, that, re, that just reject the whole Republican, Democrat. And no, I don't mean libertarians because libertarians are basically soft D's. Soft D's. Wow. <laughs> I didn't mean, I'm <laughs> okay. I'm just going to go with that. <laughs> That's what I kind of view libertarians, quote unquote, soft D's. Uh, so uh, uh, hopefully in this in this in this Loudoun school district, the school board gets what it deserves, which is to be removed from office through the power of the vote, replaced by people who aren't just simple, simplistic uh, political factionals responded to a, a simplistic political factional assault. And uh, anything else to add before we move to our next story here? Well, I think uh, I think Loudon School District will probably experience a turnover. Uh, I don't know who will replace them, but I'm sure that um, I think that what you saw there do is representative. Um, school board meetings are I sure hope so. They are usually uh, it, it isn't just the vocal minority that shows up at school board meetings per se. So um, I think that they will. And I think um, the whole, because I've seen that video and it's pretty disgusting. What's, what I find ironic is that these people with CRT, uh, they're not real fans of the police at all. <laughs> but they need but the police. We'll go ahead and their world let me finish. Let, let, let me finish. You got to let me finish. I don't. So it's not a uh, you do. It's not. It is now. I just put it in. <laughs> okay. Um, so, so no, they, 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 uh, they decided they was going to, they were going to go ahead and call the cops, which is, you know, the delicious irony. And then of course the cops, you know, should have known their constitutional duty and been like, there's nothing for us to enforce here. Well, that's so the thing. cops were just following that, that, that thin blue line is not protecting you. I'm waiting for you to say more. Cause I don't want to interrupt you. Thank you. You're a beautiful man. Right. It's I better have. to have silence than to interrupt that man. So this is this is what the show's going to be, folks. You know, you know, we're we're identical it's, twins. It's mostly Paul beating up on me and, right. and trying to prevent trying to me from speaking. Failing miserably. Right. I am. I am. I am woke. I am Iron Man. Okay, so let's get to our next story. And now this story you wrote. So I'm going to just go. Over I may be somewhat familiar with it. I'm going to go over a key stat here before I, I hand it over here. Here we got Philly Democrats keep disarming the black community, and the 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 real meat of this is uh, it's about Pennsylvanians who are uh, increasing their uh, their their gun rights, uh, their their gun permitting 
more and more gun permits, but yet in Philadelphia, uh, they saw a 19% decrease from 1919 or f- uh, during from 2020 to 20, 2019. Well, almost everywhere in the country, you see increases in Philadelphia, you see a decrease. And uh, you have some things to say about it. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, make your case, which I. Yeah, yeah to qualify what I'm going to say is um, I want to be clear. Uh, Democrats don't like people of color like they pr- pretend to. No, they don't. Uh, they're not fans of the black community. Um, mm. But this does not mean that Republicans are the opposite and do care, because they also, uh, a, a great example is a Democrat wants to have, uh, have people on welfare and will create policies that say, if you have the father at home, you don't get benefits. Pretty racist. Uh, so that's I, racism racist policy, right there. Racist straight up, policy. straight up racism. Yeah, well, and the second is thing is then, but then the Republican will be like, nobody should get welfare. Pull yourself right. up by your own bootstraps, which right. is also racist yeah. as far as I'm concerned. So no, no love as far as, you know, nobody pox on all their houses as it were, but I'm not a black person. Uh, I, we, you and I, Paul, we grew up, at least part of our, our childhood was in the ghetto and like in the inner city. And, you know, we maintain friendships. Uh, I certainly have over the years. Um, so my understanding of it is probably a little different than what most white people have an understanding because they don't, they're not like, they didn't walk the streets. They didn't, they didn't watch their friends get screwed, blowed and tattooed. Like I did, like we did. So, they haven't, my pers- they haven't experienced inner city schools like we have. So I, I can't speak to, um, I really nice, can't nice speak close to. close up of your mouth. Good. Sorry. <laughs> I can't speak to this like uh, somebody who's actually black and, and lives in this world. But the truth is the right to self-preservation is a, is a God-given, it's a sacred right. It's a human right. Call it from nature. Call it from God. It is our specific right to preserve our own lives without having to depend on somebody else doing that. Ergo, the right to keep and bear arms, which stems from that right. And the city of Philadelphia, through many tricks and devices and outright violations of the law, uh, would prefer to keep the Black community disarmed, just bluntly, that, you know, most gun control started as a means of controlling black people. No, so gun control literally started as a means of, con- first off, right. gun control started first to stop black slaves from having guns. And then when black Americans were freed, because our principles contradicted our policies, uh, what happened was they began to pass legislation, gun re- legislation, in an effort to pre- prevent black communities from arming. And then you have situations like what happened in Tulsa in 1921 that everybody celebrated, hard to celebrate that everybody uh, commemorated. So, so you have, so you have Democrats in 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 Philadelphia that are doing everything they can to ensure that the black community in Philadelphia does not have access to firearms. That's the bottom line. And, you know, my view of firearms is if you have a problem with your neighbor having a firearm, then you've got a real problem against your neighbor. You're, you're, you've got real bigotry against your neighbor. You may not like having guns. You don't have to have guns. I mean, I'm not a fan of certain definitions of marriage, which is why I didn't marry a man. I married a woman. And I don't care what anybody else does. So that's, you know, that's uh, that's a real problem for Democrats. Well, I say it's when I say it's a real problem. I mean, morally and ethically, it's a problem. It's not an electoral problem because, uh, frankly, most of the leadership of the black community, many, uh, um, tends to. Uh, go along to get along with the party apparatus. And that's also unfortunate. And on the flip side, you have a lot of, quote, black Republicans, black conservatives that are essentially 
kind of running to the other end of the field saying, oh, no, no, we're all Republicans now, which, of course, you know, if, if I was a black person and I try to put myself in that place, I'd be thinking, I think I want my own party. I want my own things. I want my own community. I want people to respect me and stay out of my damn business in my neighborhood. Let me run things the way I want to run things. Um, that's not, that's never going to happen in Philadelphia. And I'm, I'm, I'm sort of appalled that, uh, these people just do not have the same access that everybody else in Pennsylvania does. And really the only reason they don't have a firearm is, is because of the color of their skin. And I find that to be reprehensible. The only people who have firearms and well, I mean, I'm being a little hyper hyperbolic, but it's still generally true. The only people who have firearms in Philadelphia are literally the criminals. So Philadelphia communities, they are largely defenseless against the continued. I mean, I think there's uh, 32,000 or so uh, concealed carry uh, permits in Philadelphia right now or something like that. Um my guess is there are people that know people and that have a lot of money. Um, you know, they're, they're playing games with them, make, making wait months on end just to go to a meeting when in reality it should just be, you fill out the paperwork like I did in, in Dauphin County, you know, and Dauphin County sort of tries to throw some roadblocks in front of you too. Dauphin County PA. Tioga County is like, you know, no, no problem. But I think um, somebody should stand up for these people. And, you know, as best we can, we will. Uh, and if anybody from Philadelphia wants to, you know, have their voice heard, and especially if they're from the African-American community and they're just fed up with being pushed down and, 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 in, and, and in fighting back against the Democrats, don't just simply want to be told, well, just run over to the Republicans you know, I'd, I'd be happy to talk to him and do what I could to give him a, a voice. A little, little closing note here. Just uh, remember that these cities that are, they're still complaining, and, and I'm, I'm not saying that their complaints aren't justified. They're complaining about the racism in policing, the racism in the courts, the, the, the discrimination, whatever you're going to call it. And, and they're, they're, they're complaining, and the Democrats are using their their pleas to justify police state control of all of us these are cities that have been in the hands of black democrats for decades and they haven't changed hardly anything regarding actual systemic racism in these cities so that tells you all that you need to know about who these black democrats you know that run these cities i'm not talking about all human beings that are happen to be black or democrat but the but the leadership the ones in power they're yeah they're i mean they're, they're almost the uh, black democrats uh to some degree and i, I want to be careful on how i say it but they're almost collaborators they're with enablers. the occupying power they're enablers they're enablers of the very racism that they use as a vehicle of power to control the lives of the many and i think we'll end that uh that story mm -hmm. there. We're going to go to another story, and this one you've also wrote. And we're going to bring this up here real quick. Can you bring it up? I really like the picture that you chose here for this. It's great. DNC press cover up true intent of election reform. And uh, let's see. I think you have the 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 little tweet here from RNC. Yeah, say the name of the guy. The name of the guy. Um, the the representative. Democrat from New York. Democrat Jamal Bowman admits S.1 legislation. This is the, the 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 Voting Rights Act, which is Orwellian name because it's it's not voting. Oh, it's called rights. the For the For the People Act, which, which is, is very euphemistic. Of course, yes, very very. So I'm gonna play this. Uh, let me see if I can. Oh, I can't play this. Oh man, there's no video to play. Oh, oh darn it! I thought I had the video. But that's not a video. That fooled me. That's just an image. You have to so click the link. Click, click the link. Let's see if we can click this link here, because uh, I think. And then the video is there. Yeah, there's no link. There's no link. You. you it's are. a picture worth a thousand words. Picture worth <clears> a thousand <throat> words. So 
uh, okay, so RNC Research p- tweeted this out, and he was on a show. He was on CNN on Inside Politics, and he said, if we deliver S1, we maintain power in 2022. If we don't, we risk losing power. So this is this is a bill that is essentially, by his own admission, it is a bill designed to protect the Democrat Party from voter accountability. That's that's what it is. You want to say more about what you've written here? I uh, yeah, I, I think it's a it's it's not a stunning admission in the sense that, oh, my goodness, that's really true. But it's a stunning mistake. Uh, it's a stunning act of honesty. Yeah. The momentary the, lapse of honesty. <laughs> the Democrats, the Democratic Party today. Is run. By a coterie, a cabal of elitist snobs who lord it over everybody else and who virtual signal their way to success. It has no moral foundation whatsoever anymore. Even though this it doesn't is... mean it doesn't mean rank and file Democrats or you, if you're listening to this and you are a Democrat, I'm not talking about you. I am talking about Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. I'm talking about AOC. I'm talking about the whole cl- crowd. CNN board. Clan. CNN board. The, uh, the, the MSNBC board. Yeah, uh, and and they're and they're co-conspirators. They're unindicted co-conspirators in the press and the fake press. And the corporate. So we have really a few things happening here. Is uh, we've got an uh, uh, an elected official pretty much admitting that it's all about power. We have a party that's completely uh, uh, infected with the most immoral, self serving, greedy bastards that a party has ever been run by in this country, at least in recent memory. And we we have, (laughs) and we have a press that is so blatantly politically active they literally might as well be the pr agency for the democratic national committee literally an extension thereof there is no daylight of separation at all between the modern press and the democratic national committee and as to the national that that committee there's no daylight between the the crony robber baron types at the very top who are also virtual signaling while exploiting people, <clears throat> Jeff Bezos, uh, and, and that party. There's just this big and mess between these three. And basically the net result is if you're, if you're voting for Democrats because you're worried about social justice or racism or inequality well wake up because you're voting you know you're no better than the republican you know they're better than the republican who's voting for republicans because he thinks they care about the bill of rights they don't they don't that's why we at the freedomist have long called for uh the emergence creation even if it's not one party if, if if it's local parties that at national levels cooperate but bill of rights and i think that would, might be a better idea if you had locally focused parties that had national um coalescence and Co- you know, coalitions coalitions and of, stuff yeah but but it would be important that you don't i i think it would be important not to form a a national bill of rights party but rather have you know, hundreds of, of locally focused Bill of Rights parties that come together at state and national issues to support state and national I, candidates. I, I, our, our forefathers, um, really, some of them, um, maybe we should do a show about this sometimes, about factionalism, and they did not like the emergence of parties, and they were very concerned that basically what the parties would do is just the preservation the of seats and asses in seats power would be the end goal that everything else would subordinate itself to how do we win elections republicans will argue with you when they violate their standards and principles and they'll say 
oh, well, that was the only way we could win that seat. Right. Because we can't do anything without power. Well, if you get power and you don't do anything, what does it matter to me? It's better to have an anti-gun Republican than an anti-gun Democrat. On whose authority are you basing yeah, that assumption? Yeah, so <laughs> it, it's, it's getting uh, – it, it has been absurd. Uh, I tend, honestly, and, and I know you don't – I don't. you're not a big voter per se. I have but, been voted um, since 2014. Right. I do tend to vote straight Republican, uh, but I have no delusions that – Republicans are going to go in on a, a white horse. I'm usually just doing it as a, a stopping measure. I'm just trying to slow down because right now the Democrats are on the warpath. But in the 90s, in the early 90s, I tended to vote Democrat, like a social Democrat. A so, sorry, conservative Democrat, not social Democrat. Oops. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, so, uh, uh, and now the Democrat. show's over oh, before God, it ever began. Yep, um, that's right. <laughs> I, I tended to vote a conservative Democrat over Republican any day of the week because I felt like they were a man of the person of the people, man or, man or woman of the people. Um, they weren't like going to go in for let's just keep everybody at three dollars an hour and you know <laughs> keep wages down and you know. But on the other hand, they weren't going to you know introduce a lot of crazy outlandish social experimentation garbage that wasn't just about like letting people do whatever they wanted to do, which is fine, but it was more about not only do I, do I want you to let me do what I want to do, but you better not do what you want to do, or you better dag on sure not say you're right about it. Well, so I tended to be, so today, right now, I see the Democrats as a greater threat but give it another 10 years and I might change my mind real quick. I'm not, I'm, I'm just saying right at this moment, I think that democratic party is far more authoritarian and totalitarian, but that doesn't mean that I don't have a wary eye on the Republicans or I don't think that the worm will turn. Well, when you own the means of cultural production, uh, with very little accountability, you right, tend which to the Democrats more and more, do. which the Democrats do, the Republicans don't. Uh, right, the Democrats, and and, more... and that's that's the thing. Like, uh, the Democrats will want to argue that well, you can't be a racist if you're a minority because you don't have power. Well, that's garbage. The only aspect of that that is true is that somebody who doesn't have power, who hates me, can't hurt me, and that's why I really don't care. But the Democrats do have power and they really do hate people, you know, yes. and they really do lord it over people. And they have no problem saying, well, I got up today with a burr up my butt and decided that uh, there's 500 genders now. And you better uh, start memorizing them real fast or you're off to jail, baby. You're off That's jail. the kind of garbage that we're getting out of them, you know, and, and free free minded people. Don't get up and think about garbage like that. They don't really care. They don't care. If you go to me and you say, Bill, could you call me Zer and Durr? I'd be like, fine. I don't care. I don't whatever you want to be called, but don't lose your daggone mind if I make a slip because you look like a her today. I'm trying to I'm trying my best to accommodate you because I respect everybody's got their thing. But if you come to me and you say, you better start calling me Zer or it's off to jail with you. Then it's going to be her, 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 and her. And come at me, bro. Come at me, bro. Don't taste me, bro. Yeah. Don't taste me, don't bro. Taste me, bro. bro. Right. I used to own that. I think we used to own dotasmebro.com, by the way. Briefly so. In and the great Freedom Mist. And by, by the way, the Freedom Mist has been around since. Uh, what, 2008? 2008. Or, or 2007. Were we 2000? Well, you may have been. I, I thought it was 2008. I thought it was. Uh... Yeah, remember we went to Texas in 2007. Did we? Okay. Yeah, we had well, it up there. Yeah, well, it was before. Yeah. It was Around. before 2008 for sure. Wow. 2007. Okay, so there, there. So we'll get to the next story. How about we get to the next story? Right. This is the story that I wrote. This is called "Eat Bugs, Bigot." And I'm gonna play. Uh, oh yes, love love eating bugs. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read a, the opening paragraph here, and then I'm gonna play a clip which you're not gonna hear, so you just have to trust me. 
Pay close right. attention to stories that will continue to emerge from the corporate and state-run media outlets championing the notion of eating insects, with appeals to moral supremacism sure to follow what will initially be couched as mere sustainability in times of need. Charges of racism, bigotry, colonialism will be leveled at those who dare speak out against the notion of humans being led to believe it is in their best interest to turn away from diets of preference that reflect Ooh. enjoyment to austere diets comprised of insects in the name of equality, social justice, or climate change. Now, I started off with Seeker, which is uh, Seeker is a YouTube team. I'm just calling them a YouTube team run by PBS, Public Broadcasting Systems, which is a DNC organ, so it's, a, it's an agitprop. Now, this isn't to say that everything that Seeker produces should be considered DNC agitprop. They do actually do some legitimate science, but there's their they're, they're part of that machine, so everything is couched within the DNC narrative. So they're, they're, they're beginning, this, this stories like this, I'm going to play this, uh, just, uh, just the opening of this, and I know that you won't hear it, Bill, uh, but our audience will, so I'm going to start it now. Earth's population is on track to hit almost 10 billion by 2050, and feeding everyone is going to present some pretty major challenges. People, so Could a vital pillar a of a secure food future be something a little out of left field? Could it even be living in said field? Could it be bugs? Could it be okay, bugs? let's get the most bugs obvious bugs question out of the Julian way first. Dugaway is is this a weird idea? Is. Well, is it depends on who idea? you ask. To the Depends 2 billion goes. people around the world who indulge in entomology, like that is, they regularly include insects. So they're briefly talking here, uh, and I'm going to play a little bit more here, but I want to pause just especially for Bill's benefit here. They're briefly talking about how, oh, to over 2 billion people already eating bugs, which is already planting the seed. How dare you think that insect eating is I icky, bigot. But they're not going to say that, but that's kind of where... Sex is part of their going. diet. It probably doesn't seem that strange at all. Actually, if you love shellfish, then you're already most of the way to eating bugs. I mean, they are... If you love shellfish, you're already most of the way eating the bugs. I'm not going to play anymore. So, <laughs> uh, so, so we have other stories here. We have uh, from pet food industry, though. We have don't oversell insect protein sustainability nutrition. So they're like, eh, it's not all that, man. It's not going to save us. Then we have from OpenPR.com, insect-based food for human consumption, global opportunity. So, hey, man, you can make money. Maybe you can create some insect farms, start selling insects. Yeah, oh, yeah. capitalism. Would you eat fruit flies? This company is betting you will. This is from Israel21C.org. And we have edible insect farming and big bug dreams from cultmatol.com. And then we have, finally, edible insects for human consumption market to reach U.S. $925 million by 2030. And that is from mccourier.com. Now, these are all stories that have been produced today. These are new stories, all done today. Just to give you a sense of this emerging narrative. And while none of these stories show the, 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 the outright eat bigots bug narrative i have seen stories like that in the past although not you mean eat many. bugs bigot eat bugs bigot right so you know it's the power of the charge of racism and my bigotry so you know i just i just want to drop this out here of all the sins that human beings could commit is racism and bigotry the most horrible it's sort of in terms of killing consensual exchange it's pretty higher on the list but i can think of a lot of sins that are far worse such as uh you know, attraction to individuals of non-consenting age, I'll just say, way, way worse than, than racism and bigotry. And, and that seems to be on the rise in America, but there's, there's reasons for that, too. And a lot of it's uh, uh, attached to CRT, I would argue, but not all CRT, just the, the, the CRT that the state is adopting. Okay, okay, long-winded, long-winded. Well, okay. Oh no, it's not long-winded. It's it's informative and detailed, and you're just chomping at the bit to say something. Go ahead. Well, I mean, I we're talking about bugs, eating bugs. I mean, come on, who doesn't want to chime in on? Well, go ahead. Don't bugs. don't tell me why you want to. Just chime. Go do it. Do it. Give me. Give me. Drop your knowledge. You know, we we like. We I mean, like you got show. you got to wonder why they're why this focus is happening with um the powers that be with our ruling class why are they trying to push uh uh the consumption of bugs uh upon us so heavily i mean somebody's got to follow the money somebody's got to figure out if maybe they're about to drop the ball on our agricultural output in some way 
Uh, I'm not being conspiratorial. I'm just saying that you got to wonder why there's all of a sudden this big effort to eat bugs, but it's probably simpler than that. It's just woke ideology in general is always looking for the most outrageous, crazy thing to say and do like, some people, you know, don't find eating bugs a problem. Like, what's some people? I guarantee you, if 2 million two billion people are eating bugs, they're hating it. They're not liking it. On one hand, huh? everything is a construct. But on the other hand, we'll tell you what the superior constructs are, even though our underlying assumption that everything is a construct kind of undermines our own authority. I mean, I, I just no think sometimes I just think sometimes it's like the, the, the person that gets drawn into porn. You know, you read about it, and uh, uh, they start with something simple, maybe a little risque, a little this, a little that. And before you know it, uh, they have a real doll that they think is real, and uh, they don't want to be around women anymore. So I'm, I'm just read- saying that the the wackadoodleness of the woke ideology is always looking for new extremes. It's almost as as if it it gives them a rush, and telling everybody to eat bugs. It's just another rush. I'm going to read the the ending of my article here because it. Uh, I think that you were closer when you when you said what you said. Maybe some people might think sounds conspiracy theory, but I don't. The eat insects you bigot and earth hater crowd is forming, and you can you can bet on it. And it is coming as the states and corporations will continue to develop less and less efficiency at delivering quality products to customers because the wokeitarianism of the day that is based on narrowly interpreting moral supremacism will continue to drive quality agents out of their institutions, creating more and more instability and uncertainty that might only be mitigated by creating diminished expectations of a quality life delivered by quality service. The current divide Oh, the great reset! Yeah, the current divide in this land is between those who vaccinate for COVID-19 and those who do not. The next divide might very well be between those who embrace bug eating and those who do not. Yeah, because they can transfer. Ah, the great reset. You can't own your house. You can't own your car. You'll like it. And you'll eat bugs. You'll like it. That's great. You know, I'm just amazed at the left and the right. Average people can't get together and realize that. They have a common enemy. Right. Well, the rank and file left and right, not the powers at the highest. Yeah, levels. regular people. I'm talking Joe Schmuckatelli. The we the poors, as I like to to, to Yeah, use we, the the poors. we the poors. Yeah, the poor. I'm not exactly the poors, uh, but I've been the poors. Oh, no, no. Um, well, my definition. I still got roots. Although de- compared to them, yeah. My yeah. definition of the poors is: Can you act with impunity? And there's very few of us that are not poor. Now, I don't care. You, are you there saying, are wait a minute, are you questioning my ability to act with impunity? Are you seriously on there? I'm actually, I'm telling you, you don't have that power. And neither do I. Uh, very few I, people I, 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 you know what, Mr. Collier? I'm going to send you a bug sandwich and we'll see who has impunity. Right? What, ama- what really amazes me is that people, I, I don't know haven't figured out, haven't connected all the dots. This wokeitarianism is fundamentally coming from an atheist assumption regarding the nature of the world. It's a it's a uh it's largely a materialist and I mean materialist not in the in the consumerist sense, but materialist in the philosophical sense, uh uh it's it's largely a materialist assumption that the world makes us and we don't make the world and that everything is basically nothing. That when we die, we die. There's nothing. There's no redemption afterwards. Right, and and if, and if there's well, no me, ultimate let, I'm, I'm gonna, accountability. Can I, can I can I finish? I'm gonna I'm gonna borrow. What, what did you phrase? Could you let me finish for a change? This is what you get from the show, folks. Fifty three years of twinness. This is what you get. We're like a married couple, and that is what I, it is. I'm not fifty three years old. I'm thirty five. Right. So you have this this. This, it, it emerges from an atheist assumption that when you die, that's it. But the ideology itself is based upon deferred happiness, happiness that comes decades down the road, centuries down the road. We have to live a horrible life now so that people in the future will be able to live good lives. So we have to diminish the quality of our life here and now, even though when we die, that's it. 
you you'd think that you'd be the very opposite. You should all be Epicureans, and Epicureanism wouldn't stand for this wokeness because this is about deferred happiness with no hope of redemption in exchange for your deferred happiness. This is like investing in an IRA plan that you know. You're oh, never and and live but here's what's worse: if if uh, but the, what's worse is you're you're really not going to sacrifice for future generations. You're going to sacrifice sacrifice for Bill Gates. Well, yeah, yeah. The future generations, the poor. Yeah, the future generations are going to be worse off than you. <laughs> they're they're going to be they're going to, you know, on the day they feed them bugs, that's a good day. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The the hierarchy of quality of life will be hogramites or or crayfish. I guess crayfish will be a delicacy. Wow, crayfish. Our, our masters really love us. Ready to get to the yeah. next story? I think we're going to get to the next story. What do you say? We're going to wrap it up after this one. No, this story, we got two stories left. Okay, let's get through it. All right. We're doing this. We're punching this puppy in the head. We're making it happen. Boom. Banning gay conversion therapy will lead to authoritarian moral supremacism. And I'll just read the, the opening here. The idea of converting homosexuals to heterosexuality is based on an assumption that sexual preference is learned, not created from a genetic circumstance. This assumption on its face lines up with post-structuralist thought in most of its variegated but not all forms, a fact that is relevant given that post-structuralist assumptions about the nature of the human are largely utili utilized as the justifications for actions by corporate monopolies in states that impede the expressions and actions of those that are not that are not that do not align with the quote unquote, with quote unquote gay approval, not gay acceptance, gay tolerance, but gay approval. So, uh, post structuralist type thinking assumes that human beings are primarily social animals and that so social is largely the creator of the human. This is an empirical assumption that is an assumption that who and what you are emerges from the material of the world and not from any innate human ideas that might create the world. People who fall into this camp largely view the state as the creator of the desired human and not a service provider of clients who are assumed to have agency and purpose defined by their own preference. So their response to the idea of of this conversion therapy is to ban it and to shut it down. So I'm just going to read the headlines and then I'll let Bill respond here because I know he's chomping at the bit. Of course he is. So this is the headlines here. Canadian MPs passed bill banning LBGTQ conversion therapy. And then we have, uh, that is from Straits Times. Then we have a, now this is a Reddit share, but I believe it's from Reuters. Canadian lawmakers passed bill criminalizing LGBTQ conversion therapy. India's high court bans conversion therapy, a much needed, needed law from Juris.org. South Carolina, now this, I love these two links here. South Carolina lawmakers considering bill that would prevent cities from banning conversion therapy for minors. So they're going to ban the banners before they ban. And then in right after that, it's all on the same day. These are all today's stories. Columbia Council, that's Columbia, South Carolina, bans conversion therapy for LGBTQ minors. And then finally, Christian charity alarmed by push to criminalize prayer amid conversion therapy ban in the UK. So I'm going to hand it over to you, Bill, and give your your thoughts about the whole conversion theory. Uh, well, uh, I, I think it's thing. another. Uh, it's a. I think it's a sticky wicket that is a distraction from the real issues. Uh, the fact there's a lot of pl there's ups and downsides to conversion therapy as a concept and a practice. Um, I think theoretically, if somebody decides that they want therapy to change their outlook or orientation, they should be able to do that if they want to. I think um, as an adult, I think that um, when a child has issues, um, well, first off, the, the key thing about children is that they should not be engaged in sexuality as a child it's a bad thing optimally optimally and I, I think that the 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 focus really ought to be keeping them mentally healthy and then you know letting them know when you get old enough you're going to have to decide what to do with this but i think it can be problematic if if a kid is orienting themselves in a certain way and you're putting them through some sort of conversion therapy um there are so many abuses within within that that could occur yeah. that could be more yeah. damage to the child. I, I, but, but it's the same reason I'd be against transgender gar stuff happening to kids. All that stuff should be out of the realm of dealing with kids. They, they don't need to be 
wrestling with whether they're gay or not gay or transgender or not transgender as a kid. They need to be, you know, a kid, uh, not sexualized, not into sexual things. And then, and when they become of age, then they have to decide what they want to do with that. And they should go through whatever they want to go through. What I'm seeing is there's there's efforts actually to ban conversion therapy within certain professions and fields where you're only talking about consenting adults. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, that I'm absolutely, I find it be reprehensible. Even if I'm generally pretty suspicious of conversion therapy in terms of how it's done. I'm generally skeptical of it as well. Um, I am not, you know, I, I do believe that we do choose our, I think we all have proclivities and weaknesses and things that we're drawn to like, gambling, drinking, whatever things that we don't think are positive and don't want in our lives. And we have to deal with those. And I think that we have agency as humans that we can control our nature to a substantial degree more than most people. In fact, I teach people this through the revolution within. I literally teach them how to like how to control what you like and what preferences you have based on your own personal constitution. So I'd like to see more of your face, but I think, I think what we're dealing with is uh, again, just a distraction from real issues. So or everybody's fighting about that issue. We're forgetting about, um, you know, the price of food going up and we're forgetting about so many other important things that are affecting real people. So I do think it's a bit of a distraction play on both sides that they just like to throw this up. And it's red meat for both sides that gets a lot of clicks or donations or votes. So there, uh, that's yeah. my. So I'm going to read the end of my article, which I think is uh, really. Uh... I mean, if you're listening to this, you'll find the freedom is we cut both ways. Oh, yeah. We, I, I, I don't literally sit down and say, oh, I got to make sure I got the Republicans because I zing the Democrats. Just who we I mean, are. I'll sing whoever I want to sing. And Just if it's. Who we are. Yeah. If it, if it's all on one side one day and all on one side another day, that's just so how it. it is. Yeah, so be it. So right. be it. Yeah, we're not looking to be equal opportunity anything. It's we are going no. to reflect what we believe uh, based upon our, our our analysis of the situation. So this is what I the last two paragraphs here. There are plenty of concerns surrounding conversion therapy treatment that even some evangelical evangelical Christians will cite. By the way, you you would consider yourself an evangelical Christian, right? Most, uh, most definitely. Yeah. So, so you are a, a case in point, uh, though, though the perception and again, rightly so, in our opinion, that banning CRT wholesale will lead to a threat on religious liberties far beyond what actual conversion therapy really entails is leading these folks to be silent as the quote unquote devil in the details problem of conversion therapy don't seem to be as devilish as the devil in the whole proposal of banning conversion therapy in the first place presents. So you're kind of forced into, once again, yeah. a black and white uh, position. Once again, nuance is murdered for the sake of factional moral supremacist extremism, as demonstrated by the left in America, to be met most likely with a degree of oversimplistic moral supremacist extremism by the right in America, who act out of the same fears that the left acts out of, a perception that their very way of life will be ended if they don't stand up against any assault they perceive, no matter the actual nuance of the issues that are being fought over. And we, the poor, we don't have the luxury of fighting nuanced wars because our, our masters make it very clear that we have to choose all of this or all of that. So what choice do we poors have? So I'm going to end this uh, segment here, which leads to. Well, let me just story. say this. Let oh, me just ahead. say this. I, I, uh, with reference to that. And, and I think you agree with me. Um, I opt out of that choice. I, I've opted out long ago. So, yeah. uh, uh, now we're going to end with, uh, something, you know, we, we're, we're not just, we're not here to complain uh, we are here to inform to some degree and give you our analysis, our intelligence analysis, if you will, but also offer some solutions. And with that, and hopefully maybe we'll end the show if we can have, hopefully end the show every time with something like this. We're going to be talking about Freedom is Essentials, Enjoying Free Association in Harris Housing. And I'm going to read, now this is, uh, Bill, you wrote this. Uh, so I'm going to read. Uh, 
uh, opening here. Free association and housing means you are free to choose who you live with in your immediate vicinity, and it means you are free to form clustered living arrangements with people with whom you are related to or related to or have a fraternal bond. The Mutual Benefit Corporation is designed to benefit its members, a given class or group of people who own shares in the corporation, while the corporation, and we're a friendly corporation, we're a small-scale local accountability corporation, not a mega-scale corporation with no accountability. We're actually trying to deliver a quality service, a quality product to individuals rather than make individuals in our name are in our image. We propose the vehicle of a mutual benefit corporation to provide mutual benefit housing or clustered living while preventing the abuse of this right to prompt intolerance, discrimination, and segregation. And now I'm going to hand it over to you. Tell us a little bit more about your 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 idea here, which I wholly and completely well, support. So the heart of the idea of the concept of clustered living uh, is really uh, like the, the, um, the tribal village, the multifamily, the extended family, they all clustered around each other. So you'd have like this little Italian neighborhood right next to this little Jewish neighborhood, right next to this Portuguese neighborhood. And they, and they, and they would come together in the marketplace. So there was this sort of uh, pluralism, just a, an organic pluralism, not a, and what this allowed people to do was that you could see all the different cultures. You could go and eat the Italian food or the, or the whatever food. So, Clustered living is basically it acknowledges that you as an individual have a right to decide who's going to be immediately around you based on your shared beliefs and values. But the balance is we want to ensure that, OK, you could do that, but we also don't want to run into it. And I say this in the article, we don't want to get into the, a situation where you, you got the whole neighborhood as they say, like, no Jews allowed, no blacks allowed. We certainly don't want to see people discriminate against because the flip side of that is that everybody has a right to equity, a, equitable access to housing. Um, everybody, Nobody should suffer and be like, I just can't find a house because I'm black. I had a black friend who, you know, they he had a white friend and they, they both want to go find housing. And they both ended up going to the same apartment building to get housing. And the white guy was told, no problem. And the black guy was told that they didn't have any spaces left. Okay. So we, that's actually something we absolutely, I believe, have to be sensitive to because it's human right. People shouldn't be discriminated against. People shouldn't experience that kind of bigotry. So what we propose through the, the use of something like a, a mutual benefit corporation is people can buy a plot of land together with a bunch of houses or an apartment building or something, and they can say, look, you know, the owners, the people that run this and own it and have access to housing, are, they may all have a fraternal bond of some kind, the same way that a fraternal society is set up, you know, Polish workers or something, uh, as an example. Uh, but on the other hand, we would encourage them to ensure that some of the housing they do provide is simply leased out to the public based on fair housing laws that are non-discriminatory. So we're not trying to, we don't think people should wall off and create these little segregated areas that don't allow anybody else in. But we also believe that people having that kind of close-knit mutual support around them of people that, you know, right down the hall or right across the street from you or right beside you, you know, they have the same values as you, they're part of your same fraternal um uh community at however you folks are defining what your fraternal bond is that's absolutely healthy and normal for people to cluster together and they should and in fact if more people clustered together like that they would have less dependence on big systems the government corporations amazon etc wouldn't have their hooks sunk so deep into us because we could be self-reliant and frankly the kind of close-knit cooperation you need in order to be able to achieve that kind of self-reliance it does mean that you better you better have the same values and beliefs or you're just going to be constantly arguing about what you can or what you should or shouldn't do so the mutual benefit corporation is is a real thing it's an entity that you can use as a tool 
to create a clustered housing uh, arrangement uh, with our caveat being that we would encourage you not to do it in order to segregate or discriminate against others. So, and also it makes good economic sense. So in the example in this, in the article, 30 families buy, you know, they, they form an, a mutual, be, mutual benefit corporation based on the fact that they're all related or they have a fraternal bond, but they buy 50 units and they rent 20 out. They use the money from the rent, which is great because it gives people access to decent housing at a good price, but it's profitable so they can actually use it to offset the cost and make it even cheaper for their members. I think that's a balanced approach that, um, although as a freedomist, I have to say people certainly can. There are things people can do legally that I don't agree with. Like, I don't agree. I would not agree with an all black community or an all white community. I believe people can do that. I just find it to be problematic and unethical in some ways. Also cannibalizing and non-self-sustaining. It very, yeah. So I, I, I'm not with it per se. Um, and I wouldn't do that. I mean, if, if, if there was a freedomist society, there isn't one, but if there was, uh, and it was doing cluster housing, uh, it would certainly not have that kind of thing going on. It would be based on people being drawn to the same set of ideals and then making space so that, um, they, they have a balance to make sure that they're not segregating themselves from the rest of society. So this, this sort of falls under with the freedom is essentials are like gaps for freedom. They're things that there are things you can do to get around um, limitations on freedom right now. You can't buy a, a development and say only freedomists can live here. That's against the law. But if you, create a mutual benefit corporation and only freedomists are allowed to join, then they own it and they all live there and that's fine. But again, our caveat being, even when you do that, you should still set aside some space for just the public at large. Uh, Number one, so you can actually make money and number two, so you don't become so isolated. And number three, because we really do want to have a pluralistic and free society, not a, no, nobody should face discrimination or intolerance. Well, yeah, unity and diversity. So the diversity part is important because diversity really is where you get a lot more uh, a growth, explore, exploratory uh, growth and mm-hmm. understanding. Uh, but without the unity, then it just it it just divulges into factional wars, chaos, uh, and and uh, discrimination, bigotry, racism are fundamentally oppositional to consensual exchange. And well, I don't believe, and I think you would support this, that everything can be, I'm not a consensual exchange purist. I'm not a purist in general. But in general, the the desire is to have more and more of our value exchanges with other human beings be based upon an, a consensual exchange, an exchange where, for whatever reason, each side wants the other side to win. That's consensual exchange. And and that's what we're fundamentally that that that's where if you want to talk about that flourishing and thriving and all that, that's where all that stuff happens, where you have that type of uh, uh, amongst the greatest amount of people where you have consensual exchange. And uh, this, I think, creates that that type of opportunity. So right now within the art within the article, we also uh, I also propose that, you know, that we we pursue at the local state and even federal level laws that make it uh, simpler and easier for people to form these things. And also that incentivize uh, a mutual benefit uh, corporation that is offering housing to say, look, if you set aside 30% or more of your housing units that are offered to the public, then you get tax breaks, you get incentives. I think it certainly should incentivize that kind of behavior. But on the other hand, the innate right, right and ability for human beings to form physical or virtual or any kind of community they want on almost any basis they want, as long as the people participating are doing so freely and nobody's being coerced or manipulated or held against their will or anything like that, 
Uh, I believe that that is an absolute right. And even I, I say that even though I, I see real problems that could emerge if people abuse that right in a way that becomes intolerant. But I also theorize that a community of all black or all white or all whatever people that is closed off from the world will die. It will yeah. just become, you know, cannibalistic. And so we really won't have to worry about them too long in you, a free and open market and a free and open society. They just will not do very well. The only way that forced homogenized society for uh, sustain themselves is by invading and exploiting their weaker neighbors. And uh, right. if you if you live in a, in, a, in lands in which your neighbors are at least as strong as you, you're not going to be able to do that. That's one of the problems, by the way, with the the whole DNC take. Or I, I've always uh, well, you know what? I won't get into that. Never mind. We'll say that for another. Yeah, show. we we could but, we could have a whole show about so, that subject. Yeah, and we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up because I think we've uh, we've uh, we've hit this story hard and. Uh, you have any last closing remarks before we uh, put this? Uh, for our, we're gonna. This is the first episode, although we're gonna. Well, it episode yeah, one something that I, I, episode. something that I sort of like some of my closing thoughts to be on is we do have uh, paid subscriptions to our site. Uh, you go to freedomist.com and then just click join. Um, we do not want to depend on corporate backers sponsors, advertisers, because we recognize their connections to the system that is really trying to control you are really deep. The hooks are definitely in them. This isn't conducive to trying to speak against that type of thing. So without subscriptions, we can't do what we do. And people who, you know, they look at uh, the content and they, and they kind of just wish it was all free. And then on the other hand, they say, Oh man, they're taking my data to get advertising and all their complaints about the system. And, you know, all these companies and the things they are doing, listen, if you want a strong independent voice that is an advocate for you to prosper, to be happy, to be really free, then you should become a subscriber and you should back and support what we're doing so that we don't have to depend on anybody and we don't have to answer to anybody but you. We do have subscription plans that begin for like what, five ninety nine, dollars uh, and up and th there's different types. We have $5.99, uh, $14.99, Right. So you can uh, become, a, become a subscriber support what we're doing, get great access to great content that is, I, I hope you will find, is original, unique, and often unexpected. Yes, if you're tired of both Cenk Younger and Steven Crowder, then support the Freedomists because we will, yes. we will not be your shrilitarian... Uh, grifters feeding off of the hopes and fears, the false hopes and the uh, fake fears of uh, factionals. We will not entertain the factionals on the Freedomist. If you're tired of the yep. factionals, support the Freedomist. And I think with that, I, we're gonna we're gonna close the show. I thank you everybody that uh, may eventually watch the show. We're probably gonna for the for, we'll probably do one or two shows next week, at least one show next week, possibly two. It's probably gonna take us uh, two or three weeks or so to to figure out. We're eventually the show is going to be uh, behind a paywall and then we'll have clips that we'll show uh, for free. So we still get free content from the show, but the show itself is going to be for the paid subscribers. And we, we don't necessarily want to do that, but uh, we want to create a model that is sustainable so that we can, if you don't support your, your you know, we used to say, what, your local gunfighter? Support your local gunfighter, yeah. Support your local gunfighter. That's us. We are your, your in the, in this sense, national, local, whatever. But support your local gunfighter. If you're tired of the shrillitarians, support us so that we can do this work on a daily, weekly basis. And the more support we get, we have all kinds of stuff that we we plan we 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 already we're spending money we're spending way more money than we're taking in right now and that's fine 
but uh, we want to get to the point where we can sustain enough. We can hire more people to do more things. We want to aggregate your news in a thoughtful way. We want to give you investigative type of intelligence reports and a number of things that we're not able to do yet. But uh, with your support, we hope to be able to do these things. And with that, I say God bless everyone. We'll see you next week at a, at a date to be announced. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.